Howdy all of you delicious people. I am here today to review the 1985 film Demons. Has anybody ever wanted to watch a zombie apocalypse like film in a movie theater? Well, if the answer is yes, then this movie is perfect for you. Really, I went into this film and I was just kind of blown away by the whole thing. Really, for some people, they may not like certain kinds of gore in a horror movie, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, really, it gets to me saying that this is almost a zombie apocalypse kind of movie, because eventually the way this whole demon thing is to spread is to be by a scratch or a claw or a... Uh, or really just uh, any kind of like blood kind of pouring into anyone eventually is to change uh, one uh, person to another into a demon. So I really was just so excited while watching this film. Really, at some point... Uh, I, like, I thought that the movie budget on this was fairly small, but then all of a sudden, like, really towards the end, I'm like, man, this movie does actually have money. Wow! <laughs> like, I was kind of surprised. Plus, also, it seems that it does have a pretty decent, uh, soundtrack to it as well. Uh, you could really tell that this was done during the 80s because of the giant hair that everyone has to have. Plus, there's also some, like, stereotypical characters where, obviously, like, they have, like, they, there are some characters that look fairly, like, they look fairly goofy, but, if anything, are probably the best thing about this film. Um... Uh, like, especially when we get to the, the big guy, Tony, in the movie theater, where he's kind of, like, telling people what to do. And, like, he has this knife and he starts stabbing this one demon. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, this movie kind of does showcase a number of different scenarios about a number of different kind of movie goers. We even have one guy who is blind who is having this entire movie described to him. And I thought that was kind of fascinating. I'm like, well, yeah, looking at it, there are several different kinds of people that do go to the movie. And so they try to hit on like uh, quite a different spectrum. So let's tee this up for everyone to help them understand what is to go on here. Definitely uh, go into a trailer if you're, uh, especially because there's quite a bit of gore in this movie. Uh, so people might just be like, mm, I'm not interested in this film just because of the gore visuals. Uh, but man, is this movie just so cool. This movie is like big thumbs up cool for me. Like for me, I was just like, man, this is so awesome. Oh, uh, I felt so good about this. Um, yeah, I, uh, like I was just like, man, if only like there's, little bits of problems that I have with this movie. Like, there's some scenes that actually, like, they do a scene that doesn't make sense to the flow of the movie. Like, if anything, there are problems, I think, with movie flow in this film. But, like, you know what? Like, it is what it is. Uh, there are some times where I think they have people just do things just to keep, uh, keep, uh, people busy uh and eventually it just goes into going nowhere uh plus like there there is some really cool visuals in here but also like there is some kind of like uh things that i think they wanted to do just to like fill their portfolio uh plus also honestly the sequel of this film does have a copy and paste kind of thing of this original so if you loved this first film and go into the sequel of it, yeah, not quite like landing exactly on, on, uh, on like it doesn't have the best uh, footing onto the sequel film. 
But I don't know, like, I want to go and see the sequel just to see what kind of visuals it provides. Because this movie has a hefty amount of visual eye candy, to me, honestly. Uh, even though a lot of it might be gross at some points. But with that said, let me explain this movie. Let, let me tee it up for you. So, we have a weirdly, bizarrely, cosplay-ish, ish-like guy that is handing out tickets for a private screening of a movie that hasn't supposedly been released yet. So people are to get tickets thinking, ooh, like maybe this is the next Avengers movie. <laughs> or, oh, maybe this is like a big blockbuster film. Like I'm saying Avengers as a joke, but like, hey, maybe it's a huge blockbuster action film that is like just going to be come out, coming out. So... But instead, it's some horror movie. It's some horror movie that is supposed to be identical to what people are actually doing uh, in this movie theater. The movie is to help us understand what is to go on into this film, which I thought was interesting. With guy with them kind of making references of. Uh, Amadeus, I guess the the guy who, uh, oh my God, uh, I like the uh, Amadeus was like an important figure from the past. So when they are to spout out words like Amadeus, like there is an actual man who is actually have a historical thing tied to this. I did Google it. Uh, before this, but I don't have the like paper right here to read it off uh, to copy and paste. But anyways, so these people are to make it into this movie theater and they're just really thrilled about what they're going to see. So all of a sudden there is this prop of a man on a motorcycle and there is a mask that is uh, on this on this person. One person is to go and toss on the mask uh, to joke around with people. And it looks like this mask here, of course. So this girl is to take this mask off and all of a sudden she is to get a scratch on her, uh, on her face. And so while they are to watch the movie once everybody comes in, they start to realize or they start to rationalize that, especially this girl who put on this mask, that, man, what a mistake it was to put on this mask because the thing that is happening to this person is going to happen to you. So this girl eventually goes to the bathroom and here is when the zombie-like infection is to go on. I say zombie, but it's demons. Believe me. I know people are going to immediately say, oh no, it's a zombie. It's it's technically a zombie movie, but the title is right there. So, <laughs> it's demons, buddy. Get it right. So, we have the girl going into the bathroom who is to end up scratching this other girl. And this girl is to head into the movie theater and try and desperately ask for help and that's when all heck break it breaks loose because the patient zero person eventually gets back into the theater room and starts uh turning some of uh, the other people in the room or kills them off so all heck starts breaking loose uh and eventually people are to try to get the heck out of this movie theater to realize that they can't get out, that that all of a sudden the doors that were there before are basically concrete stoned to have these people have the inability to get out of this theater. So all heck just breaks loose in this movie theater. People are tossing chairs to put a blockade out. People are desperately scrambling to... Uh, try and figure out if there's a door or a way out of this place, and there isn't, sadly enough. But while that is to happen, more people are to get infected, and more people are to turn into demons. 
not every single one of these demons are going to just be the same person that they were before and then they just look uh like eventually more darker dirtier bloodier slime coming out of their mouth eventually at one point we even have a demon that comes out of someone's body and is to scare the crap out of people i guess and just like oh my god <laughs> So, yeah, this movie was really exciting for me. I think it's about time to go into that spoiler territory because I've already kind of headed there anyways. But I wanted to tee this up for a number of people because this movie really did blow me away much more so than I thought it was. So, where exactly is the easiest way to see this film? Well, when I was looking it up, like, I couldn't even find it on the normal movie apps that I would go into... So, one, you can do one of two things. One, this movie is actually provided somewhere on YouTube. When I went to actually search it, I found the entire movie is on YouTube for you to watch. So you can do that if that's what you want to do. Two, on Amazon, uh, they actually have this movie tied to an app called MU... B I, uh, like all, I guess one word, um, movie. So it's M U B I. Evidently, if you are to go on to Amazon, you could subscribe to M U B I and you can watch this movie there. Uh, I don't know if that has a free trial. I don't know if like, if it's like any kind of subscription or whatever, I didn't check that far. I just decided, well, hey, if it's on YouTube for absolutely free because somebody downloaded it or bootlegged it or whatever, like, then heck, I'm going to watch it there. <laughs> I don't care if it, it does have uh, Spanish subtitles on the bottom or whatever, or if it's a little bit blurry or whatever. I can see this movie on YouTube. I'm going to watch it there. Uh... Like, it might not be, like, the best, like, it's not like an HD whatever, I don't care. I could see what's going on perfectly fine. So, with that, uh, there is, uh, there are perfectly uh, two things that you can go and try to see this movie. I think also the sequel is downloaded or bootlegged onto YouTube too. So, you can go ahead and check that out uh, if you want to finally be able to see this movie. But... I think there's like also like I think there actually is a like a 4K version of this movie. Like I think there's like a Blu-ray and 4K like version of this movie which I'm like how are they going to remaster this film but okay I'd like to see that just to see like how crisp it is compared to the original. But anyways, it's about that time to go into that coveted double five time territory because I'm going to fill out the details that I hadn't said previously. So it is spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time to spoil this movie. So with how long the spoiler time took, like that's how enthralled and that's how much I enjoy this movie. So go ahead and check it out if you've never seen it in your life because more than likely you probably haven't. So... Let's get into it. So we have a guy that is half human face, half cyborg face, who is called the Men in Black slash, or the Man in Black slash Jerry, going and giving tickets out to people. Here you go. Here you go to a movie theater of a private screening of some film. So some girl is to get this ticket and immediately she is to ask this man in black, hey, like, could you give me another ticket for my friend? And also, are you wearing, are you cosplaying as one of the characters in the film? Because that looks great. The man in black does not answer her, does not say anything. And so the girl just takes the ticket and leaves. So... Uh, we have this girl that is very much really enthralled about being able to go into this movie because she's like, well, maybe it's some, like, 
a private screening of a brand new film that we are going to be able to see for the first time. Like maybe it's going to be this high end movie that we're going to be so surprised that we have seen, or maybe it might just be a box film <laughs> that we're just going to loathe and hate. <sighs> Let, let's roll the dice and see what happens. So I would have actually wanted to know what the movie is uh, before, like, if they were to tell me, oh, it's an action movie, or oh, it's a horror film, then maybe I'd just be like, well, it might be a garbage horror film, so... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but if it was Demons, then maybe I would have been like, oh, okay, let's go, let's go, since I know what the movie's about. Uh, like, if they were to tell me, like, a little bit of the plot or something, then I'd just be like, hmm, like, if they were told me the concept, then I'd be like, hmm, maybe I want to go into this. Uh, so, we have, we, ha so these girls, as well as a number of people, all show up at this movie theater, and so... People are kind of waiting to go into the actual theater. So we have uh, this uh, this mannequin who is riding on this motorcycle. It looks kind of like Road Warrior-esque where they just kind of have a bunch of random stuff that is on this mannequin that is on this motorcycle because really it's only going to be shown for a brief time. And so, but this mannequin is holding this mask. And so we have a uh, we have a woman who is named uh, Rosemary that is putting on this mask to joke around, just like ha, 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 look at me, I'm wearing this mask, and she is to take off the mask because Tony, who has got to be the coolest guy in this movie. Like, he's the take charge kind of guy because he seems like a, a pimp from the 80s. Like, and man, does he have that, like, swagger, but he also has those weird looking, like, like, there's some, like, weird kind of facial hair going on with this guy in all brutal honesty. Like, is it, like, he has these, like, he has these, like, sideburns that don't connect to his beard. And I'm like, uh, like, I don't care for that kind of, like, it looks kind of goofy, but it is what it is. I'm nitpicking, really. But Tony, as the guy in this movie, is just so, like, he's so cool. I like this guy. So Tony tells Rosemary to stop messing around. And so Rosemary takes the mask off to have a cut on her face and Tony is like well that's what happens when you mess around so Tony goes and takes the mask and put it puts it back where uh, it was before so everybody starts going into the movie theater they're like yeah like I want to see what this movie is and we have a blind man who is actually in this movie theater as well having a woman that is to describe everything to him throughout this whole entire thing kind of having uh werner uh werner who is the uh who is the blind man and liz who is his describer warner eventually asked liz at some point in the movie is she, like is she getting scared uh kind of because maybe warner from the sounds of the movie he is getting scared so So everybody is to line in in this movie. And so we have Rosemary who like she is to watch on to this film and like eventually her cut is to start to bleed and eventually she heads to the bathroom. But before that happens, so we have this movie going on and it's an actual film. So it seems that there is a group of kids that all decide to go to this uh, graveyard they go to this graveyard to eventually start digging up these artifacts and uh, like it's kind of like a graveyard slash uh, tomb slash place that these people shouldn't go into uh, I guess that they have just been uncovering things so they are to uncover these two items 
One is a book that a lot of people would say that it feels like the Book of the Dead or something like that. It's kind of like a uh, like a magical book of spells, probably. But there was also this mask that looks fairly similar to the one that was actually in the uh, like the the waiting room. The guy, the mannequin on the motorcycle. That mask looks similar to this movie's mask. So, we also have a man who is to put uh, the demon mask on in this movie, and he is to take it off also to get this cut on his face. And we are going along in this movie and having these people find out that this book is tied to some guy named Amadeus. And I googled this person, but I don't remember any of the information. But I know, like, like this actually does make sense. It's not some random word that, or some random guy that ca they came up with just to sound cool. So, they are reading this book, and it is to mention that, uh that uh like it's a tying of tombs and and stuff like that where it's uh to mention that uh that eventually like your home will become your tomb and that uh your world will become a graveyard kind of thing and like basically to mention that uh this entire world will eventually like go up and smoke at some point. So, because of how they are going to go and read these books and put on these masks and whatever, because the world will eventually be annihilated via this. So, this guy is to put on this mask and eventually we are to start seeing within this movie that the guy who is to put on the demon mask is to eventually desperately want to go and kill off all of his friends. Knife them all, kill them all with any kinds of things possible. It seems like these kids had gone and gone camping. And so eventually the monstrous person is to eventually cut through their tents with a knife and stab them numerous times. Like, really, there's kind of like this back and forth of these scenes of this movie. It's not like... Uh, like you're basically seeing it from the perspective of the uh, of the viewer, so like you're seeing these scenes kind of cut in and out, but they're mostly focusing on the audience in this movie. So we have them kind of reacting a lot to these scenes and just kind of starting to really actually get scared. Uh, we have the two uh, the two main girls who are in this film, who are to be both uh, Cheryl and Kathy who are to go into this theater to eventually sit next to George and Ken. And so it seems that both of them are kind of interested in wanting to hook up with these girls. So we have George who is clinging on to Cheryl to just say, well, hey, like if you get scared, like you can hold my hand. And Ken kind of slides on over uh, to talk to Kathy and be like, hey, like, uh, like you liked in the movie so far? <laughs> like, they're really trying to win these girls over because immediately they, like, kind of talk to them in the line and they seem kind of pretty cool. Uh, even though Ken has this bizarre-ish, like, uh, sweater that he had tied and he looks kind of preppy or whatever. He looks like rich kid, uh, like a rich kid. So, So Rosemary had went to the bathroom and all of a sudden her cut is starting to bubble over and eventually is to explode, which looks really very much gross. Uh, so eventually Rosemary is to retreat to the bathroom and like kind of feeling very sick. So there is a girl that is to go after Rosemary to see like how she's doing. And so eventually when this girl is to open up the bathroom stall, 
Rosemary is to show herself as a much more demonish looking character. She is to have green slime come from out of her mouth and drip down. And then we have Rosemary who is to slice this girl on the neck with her claws. So this girl is to come back into the movie theater desperately clinging on to help, but she can't figure out exactly where she can go to greet the rest of the audience. Like we had this girl going all kinds of places to eventually lead her into forcibly getting behind the screen uh, where like this girl is to eventually rip through the actual uh, movie screen because she keeps like battering through like the movie screen and people are just like, you know what? Like this sounds like an actual person needing help from us. Besides just this horror movie, that's kind of weird. So this girl slices through this movie screen and pops through the screen. And people are just like, whoa, wait a minute. Like something really wrong is going on. So people are to jump up into the, uh, the, movie, uh, into the movie stage to kind of double check on this girl and as this, as this is to happen, uh, we have this girl transforming in front of us into this demon. But let's also talk about what Rosemary is going to do. So we consistently have uh, Warner that is asking Liz what is going on. And Liz and her lover are in the theater together, and they are kissing away. They're just making out heavily, and Warner is not getting information from Liz. Uh, at some point, we have the girl who was to uh, work at this movie theater, who looks very much like Will Ferrell from Elf, uh, go on to... Uh, when this movie is to start, she is to... Uh, come through like a custodian or an usher to see uh, like what all is going on in, in this theater. Eventually she is to start seeing some people making out and so she is to pull a flashlight on them for them to basically stop. But immediately when the girl is to uh, kind of uh, push the flashlight away from them, they just go right back at it. So We have a Rosemary who is to come back into this theater room as Liz and her girl and his and as Liz and uh, her boyfriend are just making out heavily to the point of them getting away uh, from Warner and now are off to the side just kind of making out. So Rosemary goes and takes a rope and starts uh, roping both Liz and her lover even so much even closer together to where both of them are to choke. So eventually this leads to us eventually having uh, a person being hung uh, from a section of this theater uh, down to the rest of the audience and everybody is starting to just kind of freak out about things. So here we are to see this girl who rips through this screen and turns into this demon. And so this girl is to turn into a demon right in front of us and they are to try to take her out try to like uh try to talk to her but there is no reasoning uh she goes and slices and dices through some uh other people because they don't understand what's really going on and so eventually they are to kill this girl off uh to try to protect themselves but that just spreads the infection even more Eventually, we also have Warner, who is the blind man, who eventually gets his eyes, uh, or eventually gets his fingers into his eyes, and 
he eventually later on in the movie becomes a demon as well. So we eventually start seeing people scrambling from out of this movie theater and immediately they're cr they're trying to go to the exit doors and they are trying to rip off these doors because it seems like there's no way for them to be able to like they're ripping off these doors like they're paper it looks weird so or like they're cardboard so they start ripping off these doors and they realize that there is just a concrete wall after that and they're like oh my god like we can't get out of here like we gotta figure out a way we gotta figure out some ladder or some kind of something that could get us out of here we could find out like every single number of doors throughout this theater to see if there's an exit somewhere and so we start having people scramble to try to find exits to really find out there is no real true way out of here so they just have to push right back into the uh the cinema and or into the cinema room into the theater room and they are to just stack a number of chairs to block any other demons coming into this theater. It seems that people can get into this theater, but they can't actually get out. Because eventually, we have this gang that is in this car that is all uh, snorting cocaine from out of a uh, Coca-Cola Coca bottle because they are to put a straw in it and put the straw into their nose and suck uh, through their nose this cocaine and eventually uh, they are to just try to pass this around in their vehicle and eventually uh, one person is to just kind of uh, knock the cocaine almost out of everyone's hands and the uh, and the driver is to say, like, hey, pick that up. Every single gram of it, I want you to pick it up. And uh, the passenger to the driver is to mention to him, it's like, well, hey, buddy, like, I'm sure you've had your fill of cocaine today. And he's like, I don't care. Like, like, because I'm sure for him that costs a lot of money. Like, cocaine is probably a lot of money during whatever time period it always has to escalate to a ridiculous amount. So they start trying to very much pick up every little bit of cocaine, and eventually it seems that some of the cocaine had spilled on uh, on a part of this girl's uh, skin. So we have this guy who starts to, weirdly enough, starts picking up this cocaine from this girl's uh, like skin using a razor blade of all things. I'm like, oh my God, she is like going to get cut somehow. And unfortunately she does. Uh, Cause eventually we have this guy who is consistently playing around with this girl's uh, nip uh, to eventually accidentally cut her. And the girl, uh, the girl who is actually Nina uh, is to, uh, and I think the guy who's driving the car, I guess his name is Hot Dog. Uh, so we have Nina, who is to eventually be angry at this guy. And so they stop the car, and all of a sudden they are starting to hear a loud ruckus that is coming through this movie theater. And immediately someone is to say within this gang's car, well, it must be obviously just some horror movie or something. And uh, the group is kind of convinced. It's like, well, no, that doesn't seem like a movie theater. So maybe we should go into the movie theater and see, like, what's going on. So they go into the movie theater and are to just try to, like, walk into the movie theater to see what's all going on. It seems that Nina takes a pause to eventually go and put on a thing of makeup to eventually get attacked by one of the audience members from that movie who had become a demon and goes and uh, kills this person slightly to have her become a demon as well. Because eventually when you are to see the guy in the motorcycle, 
just slicing and dicing his way through all of these audience members in this theater towards the tail end of this movie, uh, we are to see that she had become a demon as well. So we have the guys who are just like, well, where the heck is Nina? And they're like, well, she must have went to the bathroom. Uh, I think they went go back. I think they uh, they go back to check on her and realize what a mistake that was. And so they head back. Uh, I, I remember one part of this movie where we have uh, some people who were to eventually uh, have Rosemary uh, go and try to attack them. And so they put Rosemary into this room and they put a vending machine in front of the room. And Rosemary still has her fingers like like trying to stop the door from closing. And eventually they just push this vending machine so hard that they try to break this girl's fingers. But yeah, like it's a really like this movie is so like there's so many interesting parts of this. So we eventually have one demon that is to show up in this movie theater that is to eventually have this absurdly long tongue that is to pop out of his mouth. And I'm like, oh my god, this looks so gross, but it's also so cool. But, uh, so anyways, we are to just consistently see people get attacked with demons and eventually figure out a way to take these things down. They have this huge barricade that Tony is to tell these people that they need to do, and so they do so. Uh, but eventually there are still audience members that eventually become demons. At some point, Tony has to take a knife and uh, and try to slice through uh, one of these demons. But kind of a mood point. It doesn't exactly help. And eventually Tony goes and uh, gets killed in this movie. And eventually he gets taken and uh, kind of attached to the rope that Liz's boyfriend had been attached to also for a bunch of people and Tony uh, to be hanging onto this rope and all uh, like go on to eat onto Tony and kill him off, sadly enough. But bizarrely, he will also be in the sequel as much as I guess someone else will from the original movie. I guess bizarrely, they just love these actors and so they recasted them in the sequel because they just liked their performances. So, like, the shawl of them even thinking that, well, we could just say that the first and the second one aren't the exact same thing. And, like, they're basically different variations of the same story or however they want to go about it. Because more than likely, they probably thought that, like, well... This isn't going to pop culture hit good enough. And plus also, like, scary movies tended to u recast the same people even though they died in the previous movie anyways. Because it is what it is. So, uh, so eventually we have a group of people who are to realize that maybe they need to stop the movie. Before Tony dies... He makes the consensus that they need to stop this movie. And so Tony, before he dies, goes to eventually find the projector of this theater and tries to destroy the uh, projectors that aren't that are just automatic. They're unmanned. And so they try to destroy the projectors of this film to eventually, I guess, get attacked again by some demon and eventually people are to die during this. So, so, but that leads to eventually Tony eventually dying. So even though they are to destroy the movie, uh, really the real true consensus that the blind man Warner gives us before he turns into this uh, demon is that it's not the movie, it's the movie theater. The movie theater is actually cursed. The movie theater turns people into demons. And the mask was just a vessel for this whole thing to pop off. So we have this one bizarre sequence, uh, I guess after Tony is to die, of all of a sudden like demons just coming out of the woodwork and are starting to crazily get after everyone 
Uh, but, like, basically, it's just a lot of demons who have all these, like, weird eye-looking things that are kind of running through this hallway, and, like, that's all you see. And then, bizarrely, we start having, like, demons all of a sudden, like, popping from out of the floor to go and try to attack more people in this theater. So... Eventually, more people are to eventually get infected. It's kind of a mood point. So, people are to just decide, well, being in this movie theater room is kind of a, like, it's a mistake. We need to go from underneath all these seats of this barrier that they have made that now they need to get outside of where this room is because I'm going to pause here for a second because they've realized that like dude like there's no saving this movie theater room like we need to go outside of here and see what we can get so we see the motorcycle guy who had the mask prop from earlier and we see that this uh mannequin has a sword and had the mask and it had its like cool looking mad max looking like costume so we are to have uh to find out that ken who was of these four main people are to eventually turn into a demon. So Ken is telling George that, dude, you need to kill me before I turn. And George cannot do it. So Ken eventually just goes and runs off. And so eventually we are to also see that not only... Uh, Ken is turning, but also so is Catherine turning into a demon as well. But her demon evolution is a little bit different than most of the time that we're used to seeing uh, for a number of these demons. So this girl is to have the red eyes and to eventually fall to the ground to where all of a sudden her back is starting to open up and a demon is to come from out of her back while George and Cheryl are to look on at this thing and just be like, oh my god. So, George and Cheryl are to go back into this movie theater, this time around with a, uh, a motorcycle and a sword to just slice all the way through all of these zombies. It's very much Evil Dead moment here. And the visual looks pretty cool. I'm kind of a little baffled or confused, like, how exactly they did all of this. Or how, like, how they went and, like, they must have had this, like, theater. And more than likely, it might have, it probably was, like, getting, like, uh, destroyed anyway. So they probably were just like, hey, since this theater is getting destroyed, you want me to just, <laughs> could we just borrow this room and pay for... Uh, this entire room to be used like to do whatever we want and they're like sure yeah this theater is getting toasted anyway so you might as well just use it so so this guy is repetitiously just chopping through all these demons we are to see any number of people that we weren't to have seen before who we didn't see the transformation of them being a demon or now a demon now to quickly kind of showcase some certain people like Nina, who is now a demon and is now being killed by this guy. So we have repetitiously just George and Cheryl motorcycling their way through all these people. It looks really cool. And so all of a sudden... We're just to see, bizarrely, a helicopter come falling out of the sky. And I'm like, what the heck is going on in this movie? I thought this was just the movie theater, and that's it. But I guess everything is just running loose everywhere. And to the point now of, 
we have these helicopter guys that are uh, that are dead. So this helicopter, George is to all of a sudden get it to start working. So that way the wings could start to clip some of these demons and kill some of them off. And so now George and Cheryl realize there is a technical way to get out of here because hole in ceiling. So they have bizarrely this like Batman grappling hook like thing uh, that has this huge looking like it's a huge looking like grappling hook like thing for them to fire into the ceiling for them to be able to uh, get out onto the roof. So they climb onto the roof to eventually be stopped by the man in black, the half high, the half cyborg, half human skinned man. And so this Terminator Ash like guy is like honestly just so cool. To the point of, uh, so they get onto the roof to almost have, uh, the man in black almost push George from off the roof back onto, uh, the, into the theater. And, like, George is, like, holding on for dear life as this man in black is trying to push him back down into the theater. And so, eventually both, uh, George and Cheryl are to just kind of like outpower this man in black and to push his face into one of these metal railings to eventually get his eye and parts of his body just crushed into these metal spikes uh, to eventually be killed off. And so both George and Cheryl are to see this ladder off to the side. And so they decide, well, hey, this is how we're going to get the heck out of here by this ladder. And so... Eventually, that is just how this movie is to end. Like, basically, uh, I think there is, like, a... Like, there is still, like, a jump scare kind of thing to show you that eventually there is going to be a sequel out of this. I guess they figured already that they're going to do well with this movie. Or they're going to make their budget. So, they're definitely going to do a sequel. So... Yeah, like, this movie was really fun for me. I really enjoyed it, and that's why I took so much time explaining it, going over it, because I actually did like this film. Uh, but with that said, go ahead and check this movie out if that's what you want to do, uh, or probably find a copy of it somewhere. It probably is pretty cheap via some kind of app somewhere. So yeah, um, this movie I thought was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun watching it, and I hope you had a lot of fun uh, with me going and reviewing this. So I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.